The right is turning against Ben Shapiro and Israel. Ben Shapiro has positioned himself as a hero of the right, yet Israel's war on Gaza and his stance on other issues have started to create a rift between him and some in his conservative base, who increasingly see him largely as an advocate for a single issue, Israel. And many on the right are beginning to question the U.S.-Israel alliance as harmful to American values. Things have come to a head recently after Shapiro's Daily Wire parted ways with conservative sweetheart Candace Owens after she made a number of comments critical of Israel and its supporters. Just hours after Owens posted, I do not believe that American taxpayers should have to pay for Israel's wars or the wars of any other country, and described the ADL or the Anti-Defamation League as a network of smear merchants, it was announced that Shapiro's company had let her go, something that Shapiro had clearly been pushing for for months. Now, Shapiro had previously called Owens disgraceful for her faux sophistication on the Gaza war after she tweeted that no country has the right to commit genocide ever. Shapiro even publicly told her to quit, tweeting, Candace, if you feel that taking money from the Daily Wire somehow comes between you and God, by all means, quit. After Owens was shown the door, she took to X to say that she was finally free. Now, this spat between the two conservative figures has caused a major rift in right-wing circles, torn on what constitutes free speech and how much support Israel should receive. On a recent video podcast, Daily Wire contributor and arch-conservative Matt Walsh suggested that Americans do not have a patriotic duty to support Israel. Ben Shapiro and CEO Jeremy Boring quickly interrupted him and shut down the conversation. Take a look. If you're an American patriot, it means you're pro-Israel or something like that. Yeah. Um, this, This idea that, like, it is your patriotic duty to have this particular feeling about another country, no matter what the other country is. I don't care what country it is. Um, so that, that goes too far on that side of it. And I think they're kind of reacting. It's kind of what you're saying. Yep. They're reacting to that. I do think, um, I, so I, I do so think that I, there is something patriotic about supporting our allies because we form alliances because it's in our national interest to form alliances. And having formed those alliances, and, and if we're all operating in a kind of good faith where those alliances are concerned, then there is a kind of patriotic. Yeah, but you don't have a. But but you, don't, you don't have a patriotic. You don't have a patriotic. Du- you do not have a patriotic duty to, to support, support any Turkey. country Turkey that is not your own. own. Well, it's, I, so, I, I, so I will say that that I think that what that statement is missing is the the phrase at the end right now. Okay, so I don't think that you have a patriotic duty to eternally support any other country because circumstances change. The country. I mean, how many times have we seen alliances change and people end up right. on the other side of those alliances? And now it appears that other prominent figures on the right, like Alex Jones and Tucker Carlson, who have staunchly supported Israel for years, are turning against Israel amid this genocide. Alex Jones has been an ardent supporter of Israel for the past several years, and he recently said, Israel has lost the high ground. This is not war. It is robotic mass genocide. Section 1091 of Title 18, United States Code, prohibits genocide, whether committed in time of peace or time of war. Genocide is defined in Statute 1091 and includes violent attacks with the specific intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group. And now, Tucker Carlson has said in the last two weeks that sending foreign aid to Israel provides no advantage for America. Now, this is a huge change considering Tucker Carlson spent years defending Israel tirelessly as a Fox News pundit. But as for Ben Shapiro, many on the right have accused him of being an Israel firster and putting American interests second. So overwhelming has Shapiro's support for Israel since the wake of the October 7th attacks that even many prominent conservatives are beginning to mistrust him. In January, writer and journalist Michael Yan accused him of funding the Hebrew Immigration Aid Society, a Jewish NGO that advocates for migrants entering into the United States. Now, it's not clear if Shapiro actually funded the group, but the accusations speak to the growing level of distrust for him among the right. Anger continued to grow after Shapiro played a central role in Elon Musk's recent visit to Auschwitz, which some have called an apology tour, following pressure from pro-Israel forces like the Anti-Defamation League or the ADL over Musk allowing speech critical of Israel on the platform. In fact, Shapiro was one of the loudest voices demanding censorship of criticism of Israel on Twitter, angering many of his conservative followers who for years have heard Shapiro complain about liberals shutting down free speech because they are quote-unquote snowflakes. 
And after his visit to Auschwitz, Musk appeared on Shapiro's Daily Wire podcast and claimed X was still a free speech platform. Yet, shortly after that, X announced that they would be partnering up with the Anti-Defamation League to monitor hate speech on the platform. Now, the ADL is notorious for conflating any criticism of Israel with anti-Semitism, and many on the right are critical of it for promoting censorship and posing a threat to free speech, especially now that the ADL has run an attack campaign against Candace Owens. A 1969 FBI memo accuses the ADL as acting as a foreign spy agency for Israel's Mossad. The ADL's national director, Jonathan Greenblatt, stated that any opposition to Israel is on par with white supremacy. Greenblatt said this in a speech to the ADL in 2022. The ADL has also welcomed controversial congressional resolutions that define anti-Zionism as anti-Semitism. And it has called on law enforcement to investigate student activist groups for providing material support to Hamas if they support Palestine. So Shapiro's alignment with the ADL and its crackdown on free speech has become suspect for the right. Shapiro has also come under fire from conservatives for advocating from Jewish exclusivity over diversity, explicitly speaking out against affirmative action. Yet when his friend and fellow pro-Israel advocate Peter Thiel, founder of the CIA and Mossad-backed Palantir company, announced that he was reserving 180 positions at the company exclusively for Jews, Ben Shapiro tweeted his support of the move, angering many conservatives and called out his apparent hypocrisy. Conservatives also took issue with Shapiro's friendship with Thiel and Palantir CEO Alex Karp, who has openly bragged about being responsible for shutting down right-wing political movements in Europe and regularly speaks against the dangers of the right. Far right-wing commentator Vincent James wrote of Shapiro, where were all the billionaire elites forcing congressional hearings when it came to anti-white hatred on college campuses that was happening for years? Why all of a sudden now when it has to do with anti-Semitism? People like Barry Wise, Gad Saad, Bill Ackman, and Ben Shapiro are all promoting CIA front organizations as well as other groups that hate conservatives and hate America because they are speaking out about anti-Semitism. This should tell you all you need to know. And with Israel openly eliminating Gaza's oldest Christian Palestinian community, many conservatives are outraged to find out Israel is attacking Gaza's Palestinian Christians and their historic churches. But a look into Shapiro's history shows defending Israel no matter what crime it commits is his first priority. Before co-founding his current venture, The Daily Wire, Ben Shapiro was funded by Robert Shulman, a tech billionaire on the board of the Israeli military charity The Friends of the IDF. He was a Shulman Fellow of the David Horowitz Freedom Center alongside British Islamophobe Tommy Robinson. Shapiro and the co-founder of The Daily Wire, Jeremy Boring, both aided Israel lobbyist Dennis Prager into founding the YouTube channel Prager University, where they worked under Israeli Unit 8200 military intelligence veteran Marissa Strait. In the early days of The Daily Wire, Shapiro got millions of dollars of funding from fracking billionaires, the Wilkes Brothers. Now, the Wilkes brothers also fund the Liberty Council, which has a Stand with Israel campaign where they host Benjamin Netanyahu as an annual speaker. Nowadays, the chief operating officer of the Daily Wire is John Lewis. He's a former intelligence analyst in the U.S. Marine Corps. Now, the Daily Wire has also employed former U.S. military intelligence officer Wesley Schmidt in customer service analytics. The Daily Wire is also sponsored by Cape Technologies, whose CEO is Israeli intelligence Dovdevan unit veteran Ido Elrichman. All of this has led some conservatives to begin to question whether Shapiro actually holds the same values as they do or whether he may just be a plant who does not actually hold conservative positions but instead parrots them to garner support and sway his viewers towards a pro-Israel position. One thing is clear though, the right is slowly but surely questioning the U.S.-Israel alliance.